As we draw to the end of 2018, I wanted to say a few words of thanks for another impressive year of contribution. The tempo in terms of your commitments and responsibilities has continued unabated. October this year saw Defence's highest number of personnel committed, either on operations, overseas exercises or being held at high readiness. We've been at the heart of all of that, so it is clear that our contribution continues to be impressive. We know that our tradition is centuries old, and we have marked, along with the whole of the country, the 100th anniversary of the guns being silenced at the end of World War I. Pausing to remember those of our forming corps who made the ultimate sacrifice. It was also the 100th anniversary of the formation of the Royal Army Ordnance Corps and the 60th anniversary of the formation of the Queen's Own Gurkha Logistic Regiment. So a year of commemoration and also of some celebration. As a corps, we are decades new. We celebrated our 25th anniversary since formation in some style. With every single ROC unit represented, it was a joy to gather in Purbright for the biggest parade the Corps has held since formation. In the presence of our Colonel-in-Chief, the Princess Royal, and with so many friends and family supporting us, it was a very proud day indeed, and a fitting way to kick off the year of celebration. Her Royal Highness reminded us that there hasn't been a day since the Corps formed when an ROC soldier hasn't been on or committed in support of operations. Impressive. Every one of our units has also marked the anniversary. There have been dinners, parades, the DOCO 25 Challenge and the 25 Peaks Challenge to name but a few. And we will draw our anniversary year to a close with a dinner in March in the Guildhall in London to toast the Corps as we look forward to the next 25 years. This year, officers and soldiers, both regular and reserve, from across our Corps have served on operations around the globe. Op Cabra in Estonia, Op Shader in Kuwait, Op Trenton in South Sudan, Op Nukem in the USA, Falklands and Mali, Op Kipian in the Persian Gulf and Ops Katan and Tangham in Somalia, where 20% of the forces deployed came from our Corps. I'm sure you'll also remember Op Morlop, which was the Defence's response to the Salisbury nerve agent poisoning attack. 11 OD regiments sprang into action less than 24, 24 hours after receiving the prestigious Furman Sword of Peace. They were supported by personnel from 4 and 27 regiments, highlighting that when we deploy, we do so in support of each other as well as the other force elements. We've also enabled and sustained two of the largest overseas field training exercises Defence has held since 2003. Exercise Safe Syria 3 in Oman and Exercise Trident Juncture 18 held in Norway. They enabled us to showcase our invaluable contribution. Many of the personnel deployed will have spent nearly six months away when they return to the UK. We've also witnessed another impressive performance from three regiment on the forecourts of Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle and the Tower of London. There are of course many, many other activities, too many to mention here, but I'm hugely grateful for the professionalism and the selfless commitment that you continue to show. Away from the military capability that we provide, it's been another impressive year on the sporting front. As well as keeping us fit mentally and physically, our sporting achievements have once again allowed us to bask a little in the glory that success has provided. At the last count, we're army champions in no less than 25 different disciplines. These range from athletics to rugby, enduro to basketball, through hockey, netball, football, orienteering, tug of war, the list goes on. Let's keep it that way. We've also celebrated the 55th anniversary of the Army's oldest parachute display team, the Silver Stars, who continue to amaze and impress us all. As I look forward, 2019 promises to be another exciting year for the Corps and one full of opportunity. It already includes a public duties commitment and a unit deployment to Cyprus for Optosca. From a core perspective, my main effort continues to be the inflow of new soldiers, both regular and reserve. Whilst regular manning figures have remained stable, predominantly due to the excellent retention of our people and significant numbers rejoining and transferring in, we do need to address the numbers joining the core. This is whole core business and I need you all to play a part in ensuring its success. The vitality of our core depends on it. So, people are absolutely at the heart of the success of the core and it's not just those who are serving. We have a very active veterans community, as well as this year seeing a significant increase in the number of cadets that are now wearing our cap badge. You're all absolutely part of the wider ROC family. As I approach the end of my second year as your Corps Colonel, I remain hugely inspired by all of you. But much of what we do would not be possible but for the support of our families and our friends, as well as the civilian personnel we have working and serving alongside us. So please take some time to thank them all on our behalf. Finally, Wherever you are, around the world, either on operations, on exercise, on duty, or spending some well-earned some well time off, I'd like to wish you and your loved ones 
the very best for the festive season and a happy and prosperous 2019.